What is going on, Charles Boat said So today's going to be more of a, a switch up. We're entering a potential great season. Obviously, I can't tell. We're in a totally different marketplace than what we were for the last seven years. And if obviously you're watching this when it's a seller's market or a buyer's market, it's pretty evident now because by the time you actually know what marketplace it is, it's already there because the market changes, it's written about, it's then accepted, and then you find out about it. It's usually months later. Us, we feel it weekly. We feel the amount of people that are asking about homes, the amount of attendees at open houses. So we've already known about it. These are the top questions that I get either going into a pitch, going into an appointment that someone says, hey, listen, I'm thinking about putting my home on the market. Here are the top questions. The first one is how much needs to be done to my house before putting it on the market? How much work needs to be done? First of all, it's completely subjective. I am in a, uh, an apartment right now, or actually we have a listing right now. The whole place needs to be gut renovated and everyone, we just got an offer and they said $150,000 needs to be put into this one bedroom that's like 500 square feet. $150,000, that's almost one, that's actually one third of the price, but it's probably 40% of the price. So it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money that needs to be put into a house. When, when you walk into a situation like that, I told the owner, she goes, well, you know, this real estate agent said I should do this, do that. And I said, don't do anything. Don't do anything. She wanted to, you know, maybe upgrade, maybe fix this, fix, it, it would have come out to $15,000. I said, no, you know, someone is gonna come in here and squash the whole place. So if you, if you have a listing or you have a home or whatever you have, <laughs> house, put in enough if it is not, if, if it's an estate sale or if it's something that is a complete gut renovation, if it's right beyond there, a good paint job or changing the colors or maybe cleaning the windows, cleaning up the place, obviously cleaners in general, obviously if the refrigerator, the aesthetics of it. So I told the person who lives in the house, obviously it needs to be gut renovated as I was saying. I went over and for an hour, I took all the stuff out of the house. I put it out by the curb, I said, this looks lovely. I said, anything you're not going to bring with you when you sell your house, put in the middle of the room. She was a little elderly. So I just said, let's get this out. And sure enough, it opened up the entire walkway of what not only people see, but it's the initial reaction when you walk into the house. So when you're going through the house, what I'm talking about is you have a good flow during it. You know, I, I had a listing earlier this year where we turn the couch around. So during the open house and during appointments, our flow went around or, or went through the home instead of around couches and everything else that you're used to. We had another listing that we said, we, we need to take as much out of here as possible. So it looks as big, excuse me, as big as possible. And then guess what we did, which I'm gonna be talking about the next one is virtually staged. So if it looks good, if it's really nice, a good paint job or something that will actually increase the value, but not too much. It's something that, that, will, that will solidify the price, which is exactly what we're gonna talk about next. How much my home, how much is my home worth? This is day to day. If, if we're in a bull market, don't worry about it. If you're in a market that's a little bit weak and it's bearish and a lot of people have hesitation moving forward, it is vitally important. You know, I have a call with a seller today. The tenant wants to buy the house, okay? The, the thing is that we're not in a bullish market. Comparables for the last year have really justified a different price than what I want because I know exactly the buyer's mentality right now. The buyer's mentality is it's not worth this. When you're in an emotional marketplace, an emotional marketplace is one that actually goes in and says, I don't care, I wanna beat this person, I know there's multiple bidding wars. In other words, when it's a seller's marketplace, they go in emotionally. When it's not, when it's a bearish marketplace, you have to understand that you have to justify this objectively with facts, with home pricing, with the market report, with the time that you actually put it on the marketplace, which is vitally important. So if you're putting it on in three months, do it a current CMA, competitive market analysis, or you do in the future. I do both and I say, this is where it is right now. And for me, I'm honest. I've lost listings over just saying it's not worth this. And then sellers have come back and they said, you know what, you're right. Four months later, they either hire me or four months later, they go to the price that I, that I suggested and then it actually ends up selling. So how much is my home worth? Obviously that is, we, it, it is week to week based on the amount of traffic and obviously the spring is better than the, the, the previous fall and usually the fall is better than the spring, the summer and the winter aren't always the greatest times. 
How long will it take me to sell my house? Obviously, no one has a crystal ball. But the best way that I actually go in in there and I say, if it's in a if it's in a bull market, I say within 17 days we should have an offer. It depends on the price range and it depends how you price it. But if you price it right, you market it right, you're probably going to receive in a in again, this is in a bull market. This is in a seller's market. We're probably going to receive an offer or at least a lot of interest within 17 days. If it's a townhouse or it's a penthouse or if it's worth 15 million plus or even 10 million plus, obviously it's going to take more time. I'm talking about 5 million and below because there's a lot more buyers, there's a lot more people that are actually looking for that inventory. So this is the best way to say it. It depends when you want to move and it depends where you want to price it. There's three types of pricing. Number one is above the market. I never, never suggest that because I, I don't even take those listings. A lot of a lot of uh, brokers, they actually end up buying the listing and say, I could definitely get, get you that price. They give unrealistic expectations and it doesn't sell. The second one is where the market is probably, there's a little negotiating room. So if you think it's going to trade at 860, you put it at 900. And then the other way is you think it's going to trade at 860, you put it at 860. And the reason being is that those people say, this is actually a really well-priced home. But if it's at 900, the offer is going to come in at 9 or 825. And then they're going to end up at 860. So those are the three types of pricing strategies. And then with regards to the actual home sale, if you have, the, this is the best way to, to think about it, is that you, you have your home on the market. If you have nothing within two months, it's at least 10% overpriced. And I, and I mean, you have one person showing up to your open house and you have no one even coming and asking for private showings. It's 10% over, overpriced. If you have three to four people coming to the open house or maybe two to three or three to four right around there and you have about two appointments, you're about four, you, maybe one appointment a week, it's you're about 5% overpriced. If you have a good open house showing, which is five plus, if you have at least two to three appointments, it's priced well. But then if all that dissipates over two months, like I was saying, it's starting to look like you need to actually lower the price. Or as we say, price improvement. Is staging really important? Yes and no. If you're in a new development and you have a home that you need to say, the you stage the first floor and then all the other floors along that line look exactly the same. So you see it with staging, without staging. I, I don't know. Virtual staging is so good nowadays that I just, I virtually stage something because it depends on the cost of the staging. It could range from 10,000 to 50 to 100 thousand dollars to stage an apartment and it depends if you actually sell it or not sell it yes if it's five million six million obviously a hundred thousand dollars to instead of renovating it you actually put in good i i am not as bullish on staging i don't know what the staging marketplace is like but the virtual staging actually works for most of our needs because if it doesn't sell like we have a property that's not selling right now putting in virtual state or i'm sorry regular staging would not help because no one's actually going there and seeing this. But when they're there, I can sell, this is where you'd put your couch here. Should I be present when buyers view my house? Okay, so there's a, an owner that likes to, she wants to be involved. She's a developer, she owns multiple properties through in New York City, and I said, no, you can't. Because what, this is the thing, is that buyer's needs are completely different than what you thought was important. And the only way to find out what buyer's needs are is to ask them, what's important? Do you like to entertain? Do you like to cook? Do anything that, any people that are gonna be staying there, whether it's parents or friends, uh, are you gonna be working from home? Do you need a desk area? Do you need this second bedroom as, like I said, a friend or anyone staying over here? What are you gonna use it for? Do you need to build it out? Are you gonna take it out? Are you gonna renovate it? What are you gonna, all those questions you need. And when the seller's there, you know, it's, this is what I did to the apartment. This is what I liked about it, which could be totally different than a buyer. You know, I walk into a place, I just care about it's quiet and it has sun. I don't care about the view. As long as it has sun coming from somewhere <laughs> and it's quiet, that's what I care about. But someone else could say, I really like the loft space or I really like the open kitchen or I really like the, the bathroom or whatever the case is. So, and the last thing is the agent's commission. What is the agent's commission? You know, Gary Keller has talked about this. I know this is a longer than normal video, but Gary Keller has talked about this. There's three types of people that are probably gonna be in the future. The first one is gonna be some kind of app that we don't know about that hasn't been public or it is public, but the app is just gonna say, this is the home, here's how to access it, and then the buyer and the seller probably maybe meet or maybe never meet, and then the home is traded 
probably below market because the buyer is going to have an upper hand. The second piece is going to be people that are very, very inexpensive, maybe charging 1% and then they give the buyer's agent something, you know, an incentive. So those are the people that need to sell. Those are estate sales. Those are people that are, maybe they over-renovated. Maybe it's people that are going through a divorce or they have a baby or they have, they have something going on in their life. They need to sell immediately and they, and they need to, that's kind of ties in with the first one, but they, they need to make a certain amount. I actually had someone that recently where they over-renovated and I walked in, I said, this is what the price of your home is. And they said, that's not going to work. I'm like, well, that's how much the home is worth. I'm sorry that you over renovated and that you have to move so quickly, but this is, this is the objective reality right now. And then obviously the third one, which is going to be full service. I am going to only be in full service where I come in, you get expertise advice before we actually list it. Should we paint? Should we not paint? Should we renovate? What do we do with this? Do we stage it? Do we vir virtually stage it? You know, just give us some feedback, give us some pricing feedback and give us some expectations on timing. That's the, that's the, and especially if you're someone that wants to maximize the cost, someone that wants to go through that, just, just relieve all the stress. Those are the agents that are, those are the three types of agents. They're all going to be fighting over the business, but they're all going to be in business. Hope that helps a little bit. It's top five questions that I, uh, were those five? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Those are the top five questions, actually six, uh, questions that I get. And obviously, there's a lot of subjective answers to that based on individual circumstances. Hopefully that, that value helps. If you guys want, we have actually the magazine that has come out. This one is um, the Q3 marker report for 2018. If you're in 2019, it gives you nice little flipping pictures of, you know, obviously uh, the age old question, should I rent or buy in New York City? So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Shoot me a message, charles at boatenston.com. Otherwise, happy selling and hopefully the marketplace is fantastic for you to buy or sell, whatever you want to do. Touch you soon.